Good afternoon from the kitchen folks. It's another experimental day in home brewing and I'm not going to lie, I've got a bit of a weird one for you today. It's somewhere in between a turbo cider and a mead with a couple of extra ingredients added. So the key ingredients in today's brew are one litre of apple juice from concentrate some crystallised ginger, which I've never used in brewing before, a jar of honey, half a jar of golden syrup, a bit of extra sugar, just to whack it up a little bit, and I've got some Austrian tea bags. They say black tea, but they're more like, they're somewhere in between a traditional English black tea and uh, chamomile, somewhere in between that, imagine, a bit floral, and of course spring water because the tap water in Leeds is a bit chlorine -y. So brewing with tea I've done to increase the tannin levels in a turbo cider but not that much tea in one demijohn. I've never used crystallised ginger before. I don't know if it's going to be any good. I don't know if it's going to kill it. I don't know if it's going to work. I hope it will work. I've been looking at the ingredients and basically there's ginger, sugar, citric acid, sulphite as a preservative. So I wouldn't normally put anything with uh, artificial ingredients in a home brew, um, but I'm just going to see what happens and it will work or it won't. Obviously the apple juice from concentrate contains only apple juice from concentrate. So largely natural ingredients. Let's just see what happens. So I'm going to begin by adding spring water into my saucepan. Turn the heat on. So I've got my Austrian tea bags and all I'm going to do is make a pan of tea. I'm just going to cut the strings off because I don't need them. It doesn't take long for the tea to start to filter out of the bags. I'm going to start to give it a little press and a stir. So this is a really nice dark colour now. I think we can say that the tea bags have done their stuff. So it's time to get these out. So I'll get my tea bags and give them a good squeeze and out they come to go in the garden for compost. I have a small amount of golden syrup in this tin. The easiest way to get it out is going to be to pour some hot tea in. Here goes my honey. And this should melt fairly quickly in the tea. And again, as with the golden syrup. Now I'm not measuring the amount of sugar that I'm putting in, but let me guesstimate that it's somewhere around about 400 to 500 grams. Again, this is all about building up the ABV. And the water feels nice and buoyant now, and that's what I wanted. I'll pour the honey back in. So this is very hot because it's metal and the heat from the water has come through. So using a glove, I'll quickly pour this in so I don't burn myself. So while my tea and honey and sugar and golden syrup liquid is just warming away nicely on the heat, I'm going to move my attention to the yeast. I'm using Lalvin Champagne, sparkling wine and cider yeast and I've warmed some spring water in the microwave in this glass just to get it to sort of body temperature and I'm going to add probably the equivalent of a teaspoon or a little bit more of yeast into there. Now that's plenty. You can see the yeast dropping and what will happen is it will fall to the bottom and then all of a sudden it will wake up in the warmth and it will start to move up and down in the glass. I need to move on so I'm not going to keep the attention on that because now we need to look at the crystallised ginger and I need to get that into the demijohn. I want this to release sugars and flavours gradually rather than all at once. So the crystallised ginger comes in pieces, some are big pieces, some are small pieces. I'm just going to break them into smallish pieces so they'll fit inside the demijohn. And what I'm hoping to get is kind of like a crystallised ginger sludge in the bottom 
which the yeast will feed upon to uh, again create alcohol but it, the gingery flavour from this I'm wanting to then come through so it's going to be cidery and it's going to be gingery um, and it's also going to be a bit like a dry mead so it's going to be somewhere in between what I'm going to call this I don't know till I taste it So there's the end result of my crystallised ginger in the demijohn. I'm now going to add my apple juice on top of the ginger. So now there's my crystallised ginger bathing in apple juice. And on top of that I'm now going to add my tea. I'm now going to top my damage on up with spring water. So I've filled this up almost to the top. I need to leave a little bit of room for the water with the yeast in it. And it's going to be very close to the top and home brewing regulars will be saying, oh, that's too close to the top. It's all going to come out of the top. And you know what? If it forms a Krausen, which is the foamy head on top and it does rise, then it will come out of the top. But I'm going to use something called a blow off pipe to get it going. And uh, once it's settled down and it's not uh, flooding out the top anymore, then I'll switch to an airlock. Next, I need to take the original gravity so we can work out what the alcohol percentage is at the end. So I've got my hydrometer flask here and I'm going to just attempt to pour some of the liquid from the demijohn into that. We'll just have a quick yeast update. Look how the yeast is now moving around on its own accord in there. That's activation. So I'm just standing my hydrometer flask in a jar of cold water until the temperature reduces, which it very gradually will start to do, hopefully. So I've got the liquid at just under 20, which is fine. I'm going to take the gravity now at this point. So a very nice and buoyant start. So I'm looking at an original gravity. 1.096 is my original gravity. 1.096. I'm now going to add my yeast into this. And you'll see that straight away the yeast gets very, very excited because of the high amount of sugar in there. And I've just had a little taste of this and it tastes absolutely delightful, actually. I'm going to pour the rest of this back in. The Krausen is already forming. In fact, I'm going to pour it all back in. So you can see the yeast dancing inside there. This is what you call happy yeast. It's a technical term. So I've put this now next to my other demijohns which I've got going. I've got a vanilla cider, a strawberry and chilli mead, an apple mead, a dark Rausch beer and now this which is in effect apple, ginger and tea mead. I guess we can call it. You can see that the yeast is hanging around up here. There's a bit of a Krausen beginning to form. Blow off pipe is in and that goes all the way underwater in there. So shortly I should start to hear some bubbles. So it's about six hours later in the evening and as you can see the Krausen has formed and the blow off pipe has served its purpose well. This is bubbling away nicely underwater in there. And once this settles back down, I'll be able to replace this with an airlock. So anyway, that's it for now. Oh, just one other thing to point out. I'm loving the color. It's got like a really nice readiness to it. So that's um, from the tea that. So that's nice. Anyway, this is it for now with this particular one. I shall be back 
probably in a couple of weeks time when it comes to clearing and bottling so to that for now Hey from the kitchen folks, it's apple crystallised ginger and tea mead clearing day. So this has now been in the demijohn for seven weeks. It's still fermenting very slightly, but this is because of the fruit of the ginger that's in there. I'm going to clear this, I'm going to rack this off basically, take this liquid out, put it in here, add finings, before cleaning this out and transferring it back and that will hopefully then start the end of the fermentation and the clearing process so it's bung out siphoning tube in and I'm holding the tube in place with a pump clip and the bottom of the tube is literally down there there's very little sediment there's just some crystallized ginger pieces in the bottom so that's where I'm going to siphon from now the fun bit It smells really gingery. It smells delicious, actually. I'm very curious as to what it tastes like. Bottoms up. That's one of the best things I've ever brewed. It's absolutely beautiful. It's quite sweet. It's extremely gingery. It's not a ginger beer. It's like a ginger ale, but a really, really intensely sharp and yet sweet ginger ale. I've got high hopes for this. Excellent. I shall definitely use crystallized ginger again in some brews. Cheers. So I'm using clear it wine findings from Young's. It's a two step process. You put a drop of bottle A in first, or a teaspoonful equivalent, then an hour later you add a bottle B. So there's about a teaspoon of bottle A. And there we go. The bubbles in the siphoning tube indicate that that process is over. So this is what I'm left with in the demijohn. I'm going to clear all this out, put that on the garden for fertiliser in the raised bed, just there. In the meantime, in the kitchen, this is going to be loosely placed on so that any gas can escape. And I'm going to now leave this for an hour before adding finings B. So I'll see you in an hour. Okay, it's been an hour since I cleared the apple, uh, ginger and tea mead. And uh, there's no visible sediment build up in the bottom. So I'm now going to add finings B. And I'm going to do so as I pour it back into the original demijohn. So here goes. Because there's no sediment in the bottom of this vessel, I don't need to use the siphoning tube, that's why I can pour it. So that's about half in there. And now I'm going to add the same amount of finings B as I did finings A, which is about a teaspoon. One of these bottles does five clears in demijohns. So it's just a case of putting the bung back in. Now I'm going to give this a rinse under a tap. Get all the sticky off it. So the airlock's just started popping again because of the uh, movement. But this is now going to settle for a few days time and hopefully I'm going to come back and see a layer of sediment at the bottom. So I'll be back in a few days time. See you then folks. Good afternoon from the kitchen folks. It's apple, ginger and tea mead bottling day. Am I going to continue to call it apple, ginger and tea mead? 
I don't think so. It's a bit of a cumbersome name. So I've done a little bit of research anyway, and it's going to either be a sizer or a melomel. Okay. Now a sizer is a, a, an apple cider that's got honey in it. And a melomel is a mead, which is a honey wine, which has got fruit in it. So the distinction between cider and wine is around about the 8.5% mark. So if it's less than 8.5%, I'm going to call it a ginger sizer. And if it's over 8.5%, I'm going to call it a ginger melomel. Not to be confused with melomel from Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five. I've got my bottles and hydrometer flask in the sink. I need to add carbonation drops to the bottles. These are basically fancy sugar cubes. It's three per bottle because it's one carbonation drop per 250ml and these are 750ml bottles. So here it is, ginger whatever it is. Now it's still hazy. The fine ends have done a job. Can you see that there is sediment in the bottom? There's haze. I don't know if it's some sort of pectin haze and it's quite possible that if I put pectolase in at the beginning it might have cleared this a bit better but it's just an experiment I'll try some next time and see if it works any better anyway it's bung out siphoning tube in I'm holding my siphoning tube in place with this tube clip the bottom of the tube as you can see just there is just into the sediment but that's fine because the first bit that comes out is going to go into the hydrometer tube so now the fun bit and there we go sediment into the hydrometer tube I'm fine with that smells so gingery and then into the bottles so I am hopeful of five full bottles here it's looking quite good for it I've managed just over five bottles so there's a glass for me and there we go bubbles in the tube indicate that siphoning is over I'm now going to take the final gravity of this by dropping in my hydrometer and it hasn't eaten all of the sugar I finished on a final gravity of one 0 0.022 1022 so I need to work out the alcohol percentage now from the original gravity and the final gravity so I take the original gravity of 1.096 I deduct from that the final gravity of 1.022 and that equals a figure of 0 0.074 and then I multiply that by 1 31.25 and that equals wow a rocket fuel final percentage of 9.7% so that is quite a success I will call this my apple and ginger melomel I've actually got enough in the glass and possibly a little bit in the hydrometer tube to go in a 250ml bottle so I might as well just make another bottle up so there are my bottles, that one's obviously capped, but the others need bungs put in and I've got plastic bungs which have been softening in hot water. The hot water sometimes makes them more malleable which can make it a little bit easier to get in, not always. One, two, three, four and finally Five, right, I haven't finished because as well as bungs they need cages this is going to sparkle with the secondary fermentation caused by the carbonation drops pressure will build up inside 
If I don't put these on, we're looking at missiles. So the cages go on top and secure the bungs in place. My bottles are caged. I just need rinsing off now to get all the sticky residue. And I need to let them dry them before getting the labels on. Okay, I'm just going to leave these to dry and then I'll come back to them shortly. So all that remains now is for me to print the labels. I like to take a little bit of pride in their appearance. Just like I like to take a bit of pride about what's on the inside. And there we go, another batch bottled. I'm just in the conservatory now where I'm going to condition these bottles. I have got some conditioning shelves upstairs which are heated, but they're currently full because I'm brewing that much. So the conservatory is very warm by day. In fact, it's like a greenhouse. In fact, you can see that we use it like a greenhouse. So I'm going to condition these in a box under that shell, under that table just there, and they'll be fine like that for two weeks. I have conditioned in here before, so I'm not really worried about them uh, get, getting a sparkle. So I'll be back in a couple of weeks time. Good evening from the kitchen folks. It's grand opening night of my apple and ginger mellow mel. Let's see how it goes. So I'm just unscrewing the cage. So I'm hoping for a small pop, hopefully. Let's have a look how it pours. Definitely sparkling. I wouldn't go as far as to say fizzy, but I would say sparkling. Okay. Wow. Well, put it this way, if you like ginger, you'll love this. Imagine if you mixed Stone's ginger wine with Strongbow. That's about where you are. It's dry, it's very gingery, very gingery. I like it, but I love ginger. If you're not a massive ginger fan, this one's not for you. But if you do like ginger, then this is the way forward. Crystallised ginger, good to brew with. I've always had good results from it, but the flavour is very, very intense. So just keep that in mind. If you like an apple cider that is just slightly gingery, then I would use much less than what I did in this brew. But if you really like a ginger hit, then chuck it in. I like it. Cheers folks and I'll catch you on the next brew. The film that you've just watched is a Moss Home and Garden production. You can find more by going to www.mosshomeandgarden.co.uk. I'd just like to say thank you very much for supporting my YouTube channel and for watching my films. It really is very much appreciated. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to my YouTube channel in order to receive future updates about the home and garden films which I upload. You can find my YouTube channel by going to www.mosshomeandgarden.co.uk. Please click on the red subscribe button. When you've done that, a little bell will appear. If you press that also, then you'll get future updates about the films which I upload. If you like my films, if you like my style of filming, then you might also like my travel channel, which you will find by going to youtube.com forward slash Stuart Moss or typing www.mosstravel.tv. Again, if you could subscribe to that channel, it would be hugely appreciated. If you'd like to get Moss Home and Garden updates on Facebook, then please open Facebook and do a search for Moss Home and Garden and you will find the page. If you like the page, then you will get future updates on there. 
and if you'd like to connect on Instagram for home, garden and travel photography as well as some stories then my username is stumoss, S-T-U-M-O-S-S. If you'd like to connect on Twitter then my username is at Stuart Moss and if you'd like to contact me about film usage or any other issue please just email me on stewmosshomegarden at gmail.com once again thank you very much for supporting my channel for watching my films I do appreciate it I'd just like you all to have a great day